views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. Each week, you'll learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness and explore the deeper knowledge within. Welcome home. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Neff. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Kelly Neff, and you are listening to Lucid Planet Radio here on Transformation Radio, Starcom Radio Networks, and CRN Digital Talk, and more. Please stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience healing, inspiration, and knowledge, because every week we have some of the most gifted scientists, healers, speakers, and authors helping you to become the greatest version of yourself. You can find out more on thelucidplanet.com and stream all of our podcasts for free free on lucidplanetradio.com, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, etc. Just search for Lucid Planet Radio. And please uh, connect with me on Facebook and Twitter at The Lucid Planet with Dr. Kelly. And you can follow my new weird and kind of amazingly weird uh, Instagram account at The Lucid Planet. Um, and you can also go to the website to find out how to nominate yourself or someone else for the show uh, or how to become an advertising partner to our extensive audience across over 250 AM, FM, digital, and cable stations across 11 million homes in the U.S. And I just want to give a big shout out to our new listeners tuning in on Starcom Radio Network. Uh, big thanks to Ed Tile for making it happen. And I hope that you guys all enjoy today's show. If you want to call in, you can 1-800-930-2819. Now today, I am absolutely thrilled to welcome back the one and only Rick Doblin to the show. If you don't know, Rick Doblin, Ph.D., is the founder and executive director of the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, also known as MAPS, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to developing psychedelics and marijuana into prescription medicines. Currently, MAPS is preparing for FDA-approved phase three clinical trials examining the safety and efficacy of MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for post-traumatic stress disorder. This is basically the final round of studies before requesting FDA approval for this to become an FDA-approved treatment, which is anticipated to happen in 2021. Now, there's so much to discuss, and there's really never been a time in modern history where the, really the importance of psychedelic medicine has been more widely recognized. Um, there's all this stuff happening. We're really moving towards this post-prohibition world. What will this transition look like? I mean, 2017, right off the bat, is already offering a really intriguing and interesting political and cultural landscape as a background to the work that MAPS does. So Today, I'm hoping to talk to Rick Doblin about all of this, the therapeutic applications of psychedelics, the creative, spiritual, personal growth potential of psychedelics and marijuana. And also, we're going to talk about the regulatory challenges uh, that come into play when studying Schedule One substances, uh, as well as more details on the timeline for MDMA-assisted psychotherapy and psychedelic harm. So on that note, let's please welcome Rick to the show. Hi, Rick. Hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's wonderful to have you back on. Um, it's been about a year since we last spoke. What have you guys been up to since <laughs> we last talked? <laughs> well, the fundamental transformation that's taken place over the last year mm -hmm. is the move from phase two pilot studies for MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for PTSD to what's called phase three studies. And the phase Two studies are designed to be small studies where you figure out your methods, you figure out your patient population, you get a sense of the magnitude of your effect, and it's all about designing the studies for phase three. And phase three are the studies that count to prove safety and efficacy. They're the last step before you get approval for prescription use. So over the last year, we've finished up our phase two studies which we have had um, taking place in Israel, Canada, and in the United States. We've treated over 107 people 
with chronic treatment resistant post traumatic stress disorder, and we have very, very promising results. And we've been engaged now in a series of discussions with FDA, and they've approved our move to phase three. And on Monday of this week, just a few days ago, we submitted the our proposed phase three design for what the FDA calls special protocol assessment. It's a special process where they take extra time to review the protocol, and then if they feel comfortable with it, and there's a bit of negotiation back and forth, if they feel comfortable, they will say that if you get the results proving safety and efficacy from this design, then they will approve the drug unless some new safety issue has arisen. Mm -hmm. So we think that within the next um, 90 to 100 days or so, um, we're hoping that we will have approval from the FDA for the phase three study, which will take place in around 14 locations in Israel, Canada, and the United States. Awesome. And it's, uh, it's a pretty exciting transition because there is this general sense that the tools, the treatments that we have available for PTSD are really, um, they leave a lot of people untreated and or still suffering. So as of June 30th of this 2016, so roughly six months ago, there was 868,000 veterans receiving disability payments for PTSD from the VA at a cost of roughly $17 billion a year. Wow. It's, and there's hundreds of thousands more veterans receiving disability payments for depression and anxiety, not just PTSD. So it's an incredible amount of human suffering and financial costs. And so what we're finding is that the political resistance in the past to research with any psychedelic is really crumbling. And the scientific interest is growing in an enormous way. So just for example, this morning, I had a meeting at the McLean Hospital, which is part of Harvard Medical School, and it was to discuss whether they would consider the possibility of being a site, one of the sites for phase three MDMA PTSD research, and the meeting went very well. And so we're going to be moving into the next set of discussions. I'm not sure exactly how it'll turn out, but but I'm hopeful. Yeah. And so... You know, Harvard is the place where Timothy Leary was, that people know about, you know, Timothy Leary and Ram Dass and Richard Alpert mm -hmm. you know, and Ralph Metzner. And there's a kind of cultural stigma about that. So this renaissance in psychedelic research, uh, having it take place at Harvard is a, a sign that, you know, the culture has been healing from that and we can renewed um, scientific investigations. So I'm very, very hopeful for that. And, and one of the things that influenced them, actually, at, at McLean Hospital was that some of the people that they know around the country are also getting involved. There's going to be a study at Yale with mm -hmm. MDMA, with people with PTSD, and it's not a therapy study, but it's a mechanism of action study. So it's going to take people with uh, PTSD, give them MDMA, and stick them in an fMRI scanner. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And then they read a trauma script, and then they read a neutral script, and they see how their brains light up and which portions of it light up. And it's also going to be an interesting study because, in a way, it's looking at what MDMA does without this whole process of psychotherapy. So these are just minimal preparation. It's not meant to be a therapy study. It's just looking at what happens when they're in a scanner. But they're only in a scanner for an hour, and the MDMA is going to last six or seven hours. And they'll be accompanied by um, supporters, support staff, who are not necessarily going to do psychotherapy, but will be talking to people about what they're feeling. So it's, it's kind of a way to look at what's the minimal amount of support and see how well MDMA does on its own. Because in our phase three, it's 40 hours of therapy with two therapists, a male-female team. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of therapy. One of the male-female team needs to be licensed as a therapist or a psychiatrist or a social worker, but the other one can be a student, uh, learning how to be a psychotherapist, doesn't need to be a licensed professional. So that'll adjust the costs down. 
but it, it's still extensive therapy. But I guess to give uh, people who are listening a sense of the potential, uh, yes. what we've found is that at the one year follow up, and this is after people have taken MDMA uh, three times, two or three times, one month apart with non drug psychotherapy. And then we um, measure them two months after the last MDMA session and then one year. And these are people now that have chronic treatment-resistant PTSD, um, moderate to severe to extreme. So we're taking the worst cases. And at the end of the one-year follow-up, two-thirds of them no longer had PTSD. This is incredible. Yeah. And of the other one-third, a lot of them had reduced symptoms, even if they still had PTSD. And if we could have given them a fourth or a fifth session, that might have yeah. done further work. Because what we found is that people that are high on the dissociation scale, so it's like when people are traumatized, a lot of times it's so scary, so frightening that they split off. And that's a psychological mm -hmm. defense. And the, you know it's called dissociative identity disorder. People have called it multiple personalities is an extreme reaction of that. Um, so people that are high on the dissociation scale um, need more help. They need more support to, to integrate the experiences. They've been so frightening, they sort of push them away. Mm -hmm. And so little by little, we can help them. So we're thinking that this other third of people that still do have PTSD, for many of them, if we could give one or two more sessions, that might be helpful. But but the main point here is just that it's very, very helpful. MDMA is an incredible adjunct to psychotherapy for people with PTSD. And as a society, we're finally reaching what seems like a level of maturity. It's taken 50 years since the 60s, but psychedelics are re-entering science. They're re-entering medicine. The media has been quite positive about it. We've been doing a lot of public education, and I really mm -hmm. appreciate the opportunity to be talking with you and, and your audience as well, because we feel it's absolutely crucial that people understand what's going on. Absolutely. And we, we definitely, at this show, I'm just always so interested in understanding how we can make our lives better and we can reduce the suffering of the human experience even a little bit. And psychedelic medicine has the potential to do it on such a massive scale um, and in such a new way. So uh, when we come back on Lucid Planet Radio, Rick Doblin and I are going to talk much more about this, about this kind of cultural kind of situation that's emerging um, with, when it comes to legalizing psychedelic medicine, MDMA, and also all the other research they're doing, as well as the psychedelic science conference that's happening this April in San Francisco. So stick with us and we will be right back. Tune in to Dynamics of Diversity Radio, scripting the new narrative for immigration with leading experts, Kripa Upadhyay and Steve Tanijo on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This show will remove the noise that often accompanies discussions on this topic and share a new perspective on the dynamics of immigration and diversity, ever reminding us that together we are all at the core of innovation, excellence, and positive change. Visit OrbitLawPLLC.com for upcoming topics. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. 
Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, a.m. 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and my guest today is the legendary <laughs> Rick Doblin, <laughs> um, who is talking with us about psychedelic medicine and so much more. Um, but before we continue, Rick, I just want to make sure that everybody knows how to contact you to find out more about the work that MAPS does, the Psychedelic Science Conference, and more. Well, there's two different ways. One is to contact me personally, rick at maps.org. And I have um, uh, Mareda Christensen, a staff member, that helps me go through emails so that awesome. we can try to respond to everybody. We also have um, the MAPS website, maps.org. And there's all sorts of information. There's an incredible amount of information there about the protocols that we're working on, the treatment method that we have that we use, which is posted up there, about the Psychedelic Science Conference that's coming up in April in Oakland from the 19th of April to the 24th. We have just an enormous amount of information on the website. And also, you know, I'd be glad to try to respond as well. That's really rad. You don't often get that from someone running such a massively busy organization. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's only know. because Marina helps me <laughs> that I can do that. There you go. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so one of the questions that I've had a couple of our listeners write in, and it's also something that has really been just incredibly front of mind for me, is obviously this new political administration. And there's already just this week been all this stuff about scientists potentially being banned from talking about their work to the press or the public if they're on a government study and all this stuff about alternative facts and fake news and just like this kind of insane but really interesting political climate. And Rick, I'm so curious, what do you think, if any, is going to be the effect of this kind of new political administration on the works that MAPS does? Well, of course, we have been thinking about this a lot. And so let me make a distinction between the work we do with marijuana. We have a marijuana PTSD study, and we're trying to break the federal monopoly on the supply of marijuana for FDA-approved research and the um, psychedelic research. So let me start by saying that um, even before this new administration came on, uh, a bill was passed in Congress with bipartisan support called the 21st Century Cures Act. And the purpose of that was to make it easier to move drugs through the FDA system, to require some, in some cases, less uh, evidence of efficacy before it will be approved, and to just try to expedite the process. Gotcha. So that's in place. The new administration is very much anti-regulations, and that's true. They're, you know, I think that in some aspects, you know, that's very dangerous, you know, like environmental regulations. I think generally they're a good idea. It just tried yeah. to block all of those. Yep. Um, I think requiring evidence of safety and efficacy for drugs is very important. But we have, through my fundraising efforts, you know, tried to focus a lot on Silicon Valley. And I thought, you know, that might be where we'd get some funding because it's all nonprofit and, and we're going to need 25 to $30 million to make MDMA into a medicine for PTSD. 
And I remember last time you were on the show saying that that's the change in the couch at the Pentagon. Right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> For all these veterans, they're spending $17 billion. Um, so they could easily afford 20 to 25 mil to get this study. But you know, they could. Ahead. And we already have over $10 million toward it, too. Amazing. So we, we will be able to do it. But, um, you know, I've been meeting some of the people that were connected to Peter Thiel. He's the um, Facebook um, and PayPal uh, investor, tech billionaire. And because he endorsed Trump, he's ending up having an influence in the transition team. And he's been involved um, in his team with the FDA transition. Mm. So, you know, I, I think that cool. the two parts is that they, they do want less regulation. That'll help us. But then the other part is the fact that we're doing a lot of work in veterans. And, you know, President Trump has made a big deal about how he's very much behind veterans. And so we've tried in this last couple of months to do whatever we can to reach out in a bipartisan way. So we had one of the veterans was in our study. Um, he published a story on redstate.com mm. about his treatment with MDMA. That's a very Republican website. Yes. Um, Fox News did a six minute Fox headline news did six minutes with Michael Midhofer on MDMA for PTSD and veterans entirely positive stars and stripes, which is the yeah. news for the U S military. They'd had a, on December 22nd, they had a front page article that went inside all of page six and most of page seven about MDMA PTSD research. And just last Sunday, um, the today show had a story on MDMA for PTSD with one of the veterans. So I think that because we're doing work with, a sympathetic patient population because the new administration and even before that is looking to streamline the approach through FDA. I think that we will be able to move forward. And one of the things that's so interesting, and I think is one of the reasons why people are supporting us is that there was two Stanford neuroscientists, uh, Boris Heifetz and uh, Rob Malenka, and they published an article in the journal cell, which is one of the most, scientifically well-regarded peer-reviewed journals. And the article, the commentary that they published was about MDMA. And what they were saying is that all the tools of neuroscience should be focused on figuring out how MDMA works. It was like a call to action. Oh, I love that. It was fantastic. And then when you read the article, it was almost something I could have written myself because <laughs> at the end of it, they say the reason why we need to do this is because the world needs more compassion and empathy. And MDMA can help us understand the processes of compassion and empathy. So we need neuroscience to understand MDMA to help the world, not just to treat PTSD patients or, you know, we have studies with autistic adults with social anxiety with MDMA that have turned out great. We have studies with people with life-threatening illnesses that are scared of dying with MDMA that's helped them. And couples too, right? Yeah, we have a couples therapy. It's it's that's very interesting because that's the that's first study. Really interesting, yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. It's the first study with VA affiliated therapists, mm -hmm. and they've developed an approach called cognitive behavioral conjoint therapy. Mm -hmm. Conjoint meaning dyad or couple. So yep. one of them has PTSD, but it affects the relationship. Yes. And so we've been able to work with Candace Monson, who developed that when she was at the Boston, the VA, and she's interested in blending MDMA with her approach. And we've got permission from FDA, IRB, DEA to give both members of the couple MDMA. So it's really, really interesting. And from a political point of view, we can never make MDMA into a medicine for couples therapy because you can only medicalize drugs for diseases. Mm relationships may feel that way, but, <laughs> but, but we can't medicalize. So through this work with cognitive behavioral conjoint therapy, we're able to learn a lot about relationships. So in addition to the measure of PTSD symptoms for the one member of the couple that has PTSD, there's all sorts of measures about their communication styles, how the relationship is going. So we're learning a lot about couples therapy but in the context of treating PTSD. It's really fascinating and quite holistic. And 
reminds me of how the the history of MDMA in America, of how it was used, you know, in, in couples therapy or couples counseling by p- kind of underground therapists while it was still gets being passed around. Um, and, but I mean, again, it's only anecdotal evidence that we have, but it seemed that it was very successful back then. It, it, it was. And there are, there are ways in which MDMA um, re- helps people feel um, that they can accept themselves. Mm. They feel less defensive and therefore yes. they can, in a relationship, they can actually want to hear what somebody else really thinks about them and really so that, that you're more open, you're a better listener and you're more interested in what the other person has to say in a less defensive way and through mechanisms that may be related to the stimulation of oxytocin and prolactin, which are hormones of nurturing and bonding, that those produce um, a sort of warm and loving and empathic experience. In fact, here's kind of a funny story, is that we had a linguist at Harvard wanted to do an analysis of the videotapes and look at the language that people were using. And Vicka Corey is her name. And after the um, analysis was done, she told us that she had figured out a way to tell who had the placebo and who had the MDMA just by what people were saying. Oh, I don't doubt it. That's interesting. And so we, we asked her, <laughs> what, what is the clue? Because we have not found that clue. And it turns out that at some point during the MDMA experience, the people that actually got MDMA ask the therapists how they were feeling. <laughs> and that didn't happen to the placebo group. So wow. imagine in a relationship where you ask in a defense, non-defended way, what how do you, you think and how are you really feeling? It's, it's tremendous for relationships and it builds a sense of support and trust. And we found that and, you know, it lasts. There's something fundamental that can happen during an MDMA experience that has lasting potential. Some ways in which the brain is processing information is changed. I, I think that's such a great point that this we're, we're going to take a quick break, but I just want to end the section by saying this is not something that you need to take like a prescription medicine, you know, every day, take your dose. This is something that you use it in a therapeutic context, and then the results are long lasting and actually change you. And I think that is a lot of what distinguishes psychedelics from other types of uh, prescription meds. But on that note, we're going to take a quick break. I'm <laughs> sure I hope I'm sure Rick Doblin probably agrees with me. Um, oh, and no, super important point, because what we're trying to say is this is kind of an anti-drug approach. It's to try to help people with a few experiences of psychedelics in a therapeutic setting to not need drugs anymore. Yes, exactly. This is not let's get you hooked on something that then you're going to get sick if you ever try to stop it or you're going to be exactly. stuck on this and all the side effects and the way our current system is kind of doing that to so many people. So such a good point. Um, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about all of this. We're going to talk about some of the other substances that um, MAPS or medicines really that MAPS is doing research with, most notably cannabis and maybe LSD. And maybe we'll talk about microdosing and some other therapeutic <laughs> applications. So stick with us and we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the Rad Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com, that's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 972 5366 
Tune in to the Angels and Answers Psychic Radio Show with Clairvoyance Artie Hoffman and Sky Siegel every Thursday for a two-hour show, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Transformation Talk Radio. Artie and Sky deliver spiritual and motivational messages with passion and a sense of humor. Call in 800-930-2819 for live and on-air readings. Visit ArtieHoffman.com and SkyOfAngels.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. We're back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and I have got Rick Doblin here, who allegedly knows everything about psychedelic medicine. <laughs> Legend in my own mind, huh? <laughs> Dude, that's the best way to be. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, no, I mean, Rick Doblin here, he just yeah. has, he's so aware of all these different studies, keeping all of these different things straight in your head, and then all the policy side and the lobbying, and I know you've done this for many, many years, and it comes natural. But there still must be a lot of challenges that arise. Well, this is actually the 31st year of MAPS. I started MAPS in 1986. And before that, that's hilarious. And before that, though, in 1972, when I was 18, is when I um, took a bunch of LSD and went to the guidance counselor at my college and said, help, I'm having trouble with these difficult LSD experiences. And he gave me a copy of Realms of the Human Unconscious by Stan Groff. And so, Actually, since 1972, this is where I've been focused, and it's just been great to have a insight when I was 18 that still makes sense when I'm just turned 63. That's definitely something to be grateful for, but and also being able to kind of flow and change and adapt with that insight. I mean, this has become a movement, and like we were just saying during the break, across the media in every different area. Um, I know like just yesterday, there was this huge thing on NPR all about microdosing LSD. And you were saying you were on, was it Chelsea Handler? Yeah, yeah. Talking and about it? Yep. Yeah. So here, here's the funny story. So in our year end uh, campaign, we're, we've been raising money to buy a kilogram of medical grade MDMA, which is going to cost us around $400,000. Wow. And yeah, it's it's expensive, but it's it's standardized and it's made in a way so that once it's made into a medicine, um, the same production processes can be used, and that's just the way the FDA wants to do it. Well, but, and can we can we also just I just want to interrupt you to say like this is different from what you buy on the street, people. Most yeah. likely, very different from what is anybody has access to. This is actually pure medicinal versus like the ambiguous molly power powder what's in my baggy stuff that's often going around thanks to prohibition yeah exactly and prohibition is a harm maximization program yes it is right to make it worse for everybody that decides to go ahead and do it anyway to try to make them into examples it's completely perverse yep um and our approach which we have we haven't mentioned it but we have a zendo project which is harm minimization yes. Uh, to yes. try harm reduction, which we do at Burning Man and festivals all over the world. And in fact, one coming up in Costa Rica, Envision. Where... I love Envision. Oh, so yeah. nice. I've been, yeah, it's really jungly and awesome. And it's on the water. And it's, it's, it's so pretty. Fast. So we do 
psychedelic harm reduction, which, you know, you started out by talking about a post-prohibition world. And so yeah. in a post-prohibition world, people are going to be doing psychedelics at festivals, and a lot of them are not going to be prepared for the depth of experience that comes about. Definitely but, not in that jungle, too. There's something extra intense about it down there in Costa Rica. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Anyway. So if we have teams of people that are trained in how to help support people as they go through difficult experiences, then we can have a post-prohibition world without a lot of casualties because we will be able to offer that support. So it's like the community taking care of itself. And we have hundreds of volunteers at, at Burning Man this year. We had over 200 volunteers. Wow. And so anyway, that that's, that's the psychedelic harm reduction. I think that's really important as a complement to the research that we're doing, trying to make the um, yes. psychedelics and marijuana into medicines. But so we, we got these um, donations, these three donations from three different people um, around, adding up to around $50,000 in December. And so that was a lot. And so I, I yeah. called them up, and particularly one of them, and I said, you know, I, you, we've never heard from you guys before. You know, they're all three friends. Um, you know, why is it that you're donating to MAPS? And it turned out that they're professional poker players. Oh, my God. I love that. And they microdose. Dude, no doubt. <laughs> so they feel like it helps them understand um, body language a little bit better. They think they can tell when people are bluffing a little bit more. Faster calculations, you know, and math and stuff, probably. Just general peak performance. Yeah, and so as a way to pay wow. microdosing professional poker, they've donated to BAPS. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Micro, that, that's actually really awesome. Do yeah. something good. Do something constructive for the world with your gambling winnings. You know, <laughs> uh, so there's so Mike many. Does, there's it, so many of them, right? Like athletes, so many professional athletes, snowboarders, um, yeah. like artists. So many people do microdosing. Do you guys have any studies on why it works or how it works at Maps? We don't, and um, we we are considering that as well because that's a very popular thing and and actually there are people that have depression that have found that microdosing LSD can be helpful for that uh Ayelet Waldman just published a book on that called a very I, good day I think I read maybe in in the New Yorker or somewhere I read a article and I, I'm wondering if it was an excerpt from this book it was like a housewife housewife yeah. mom yeah. yeah I mean she's a journalist as well yeah but, um yeah really so, powerful I, you know, Albert Hoffman lived to 102, and he's the, in, you know, inventor mm -hmm. of LSD. And shortly before he died, he told me that the most important area of research with LSD that had not been looked at was microdosing. Ha! Huh. And so what we find is that it's um, it's a stimulant in a sense. It's a little bit of an emotional opener, but microdosing, by its definition, it means that you don't know that you're tripping. You are taking such a small amount that you can go through your normal daily activities. It doesn't affect your consciousness in that way. It's just this extremely subtle opening and concentration and alertness so that your mind is a little bit more open to creative thoughts, problem solving. Um, mm -hmm. There's a little bit more energy. So it's helpful in a wide range of conditions, you know, yeah. depression, uh, uh, anxieties, and it's something that the reason that we haven't looked at it that much is because of what we talked about before. We're, we're sort of looking at psychedelic psychotherapy yeah. to help people have transformative experiences so that they don't need drugs. Yes. And microdosing is something that's used on a repeated long term basis. It is. And yet there's no kind of like standardized protocol for exactly how to do it. I know Dr. James Fadiman, he sent me yeah. his protocol. He does, he has one, but it's just very interesting because depending on the substance, like if it's psilocybin or LSD or something else, I guess. Um, I mean, even like people, they're, they're talking about ketamine too, you know, that it just can help your depression, even just taking yeah. a tiny bit. Um, it's, it's unclear kind of how you use this four days off, four days on, you know, all these types of things. So there's a lot of people out there, I imagine, because we're naturally curious and seeking healing. There's going to be people experimenting with this, right? Yeah, there is. And there, there does need to be more controlled clinical research. And I think that we will find that 
there's a wide, wide range of applications. It's just the, the reason we've been slow to get into it is because, again, we're looking for larger dose transformative experiences that um, heal clinical conditions. Yes. And, you know, even the, the people that I've worked with and have talked to who've used microdosing for depression, they're finding that after a while, they're, they're called to do full dose LSD experiences. Hmm. So it's like occasional deep dive into the psyche with this supplemental, you know, low dose microdose of LSD. And that, that seems to be from a long-term perspective, maybe even more effective than just microdosing for depression. Well, that, and that's what we don't know. That's what's interesting. Maybe you need to prime the pump a little bit, you know, just before you, you know, I I just have the funniest vision of my head of some kind of like, I don't know, psychedelic Red Bull LSD cocktail, (laughs) you know, where it's like performance enhancing, make your poker game strong, you know, (laughs) like brave new world. (laughs) I think that will be part of a post-prohibition world. I sure. think so and, too. And, and people can do that, you know, with peyote, with ayahuasca, you know, ibogaine, yeah. which is a psychedelic drug from Western Africa. It was a prescription drug in France about uh, 30, 40 years ago as a stimulant, in a sense, as a microdosing of ibogaine. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah. That's yeah. a trip. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> so they're, they're, but well, no, because it's not. I mean, microdosing means not a trip. Yeah, you don't. That's okay. Never mind. <laughs> that's a trip metaphorically. <laughs> wow. See, that's it's just really fascinating. Um, well, even like the, the story of 2CB, for those of you who don't know, uh, Sasha Shulgin developed 2CB. And it, I believe it was sold as a as a, as a sexual um, enhancer called Nexus. Yes. Right? Yeah. In four milligram. Also, yeah. Sold as Eve as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it was sold in in doses that were below the threshold, but then, you know, a couple people thought they needed a little extra and maybe took four pills and then suddenly their entire world is a kaleidoscopic, you know, (laughs) canvas. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, again, microdosing has been used and it has worked and it's just really fascinating. Um, We're going to take a quick break. Ah, Damn, that went fast. Um, And uh, when we come back, um, Rick Doblin and I are going to wrap up the show. We're going to talk about MAPS work with uh, cannabis or marijuana and um, their whole uh, P- veterans and PTSD. And we're going to also mention the Psychedelic Science Conference. So Brave New World, stick with oh. us. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Great go. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I am so thrilled. I've had the honor of working with Leslie Fontaine for the past year or so. And what she has created in her hit program, Sheer Alchemy, transcends what most of us get to listen to or hear in any point in time in our lives. But beyond that, Leslie is working with people all over the world. And she has created something phenomenal based on the feedback and input from the Archangels, from the Ascended Masters, from the light beings, and most importantly, from each and every one of you. So if you want to change your life, if you're ready to step into your own version of Sheer Alchemy, please give Leslie a call at 678-665-3366. And why? Because this is what you're going to be prepared to do. Be amazed and on your part, connect with the Ascended Masters that are there to help you custom make the life that you are meant to live. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. 
even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Welcome back to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. And if you're just tuning in, I'm here with the amazing, legendary Rick Doblin (laughs) talking with us about psychedelic science and therapy in 2017. And Rick, we've talked a lot about MDMA, LSD, um, but what about the work that MAPS does with marijuana? Well, one of the reasons that we have been so interested in doing marijuana, marijuana research, and I tried starting this actually in 1992, um, is that unexpectedly there are more political obstructions to doing research with marijuana than there are to doing research with LSD or MDMA. And the, the reason is because there's a federal monopoly on the supply of DEA licensed marijuana that can be used in FDA approved research. And so NIDA, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, has made it easy if you want to study the risks of marijuana. But if you want to study the benefits, it's been very difficult to get access to marijuana. And that's changed now because we have so many medical marijuana states and marijuana legalization states. But one of the things that we really wanted to do was move forward through all the regulatory hurdles to try to get a marijuana drug development study underway. And we felt that to do that, we would focus on veterans and focus on PTSD. So that would build our expertise in PTSD, and it would be working with a um, patient population that the American public had sympathy for. Yes. So it took us seven years to get approval for the study, and it's taking place at Johns Hopkins and in Phoenix, Arizona. It's funded by a $2.15 million grant from the state of Colorado from all the taxes that they Holla, oh. holla, sorry, shout out, I'm in Denver, so. <laughs> oh, you are, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, it's just been fantastic. That's that, amazing. And so we have the largest grant from the state of Colorado, and we are moving forward with this uh, marijuana PTSD study. The thing about marijuana for PTSD is that it helps people not have the nightmares. Marijuana suppresses dream recall. Yeah. And it focuses people on the present. But it's really just a palliative treatment. You know, people who use marijuana for PTSD tend to use it every day. Mm -hmm. And if they stop using it, in general, their symptoms come back. And so when we had our teleconference with FDA to to go over this protocol, at the very end of it, where it was clear that they were going to approve the study and that we were going to, you know, the, the challenge then was that we had, it took years more to get the NIDA to agree to provide marijuana for us. But yeah. uh, at the very end of the meeting, I said to them, to this whole, uh, the FDA division on psychiatry products, I said, I just wanted you to know that our priority is MDMA assisted psychotherapy for PTSD, because that enables people to make fundamental change so that they, many of them at least don't need drugs anymore or therapy. It can actually for some people, be a cure for PTSD, and the marijuana is more a palliative treatment. And the the FDA director of Division of Psychiatrics said, Rick, you don't need to apologize for just treating symptoms. (laughs) That's what we do. Yeah, that's true. So so that that is our one study with marijuana, and it is a drug development study. We are going to be trying to make the marijuana plant in bud form, either smoked or vaporized, into an FDA-approved prescription medicine. And what we feel is that the scientific consensus is now that marijuana does not cause lung cancer, that there's anti-tumor properties in the cannabinoids. And so ingestion through the lungs is an excellent drug delivery system because you get immediate feedback. And we know from uh, you probably know from uh, all the stories about people that have taken edibles in Colorado and had oh, it yeah. t- turned out to be more than they thought. Yeah, eleven hydroxy THC is yeah. the it, it, killer. It's been <laughs> into a different drug, and also it takes a long time to see 
what the effect is. So uh, all the poor tourists. <laughs> anyway, yeah. well, we're trying to do the hardest thing, which is yes. take bud and make it into a medicine in smoked form. And we're working with a group called Tilray, which is a medical marijuana production company in Canada. They're doing our, they've, because we're a nonprofit, we give away the protocols. We try to encourage other people to do research. We're not trying to, you know, keep it all secret. And so they're going to be using our protocol, but they're going to be using vaporizers instead of smoking. So we'll have two different studies. We'll compare in that way. And then at the same time, we're also working with Professor Lyle Craker at UMass Amherst to try to get a license to grow marijuana federally legal. So there's, you know, enormous industry in Colorado, over a billion dollars worth of marijuana was sold last year. Yep. But none of the producers are federally legal. And the same is true for California. For none of the state producers are federally legal and none of their marijuana can be used in FDA approved studies. It is such a cluster in that way. I, it's bizarre. So, so we're going to be focused on trying to break the night of monopoly cool. even under Attorney General Sessions. We're going to keep at it. Um, we've been working on that since 1999. Jeez. And, uh, you know, these are just the uh, long-term plans. And, um, you know, when, when you think about it, at least from my sort of, uh, you know, age 63, looking back, it's like, where did the time go? It's yeah. so, it just sort of slips by. So having a 20-year plan no longer seems like a long-term plan because no. I've got a whole different sense about time now. And so it's really just um, a long-term plan. Then we'll hopefully over the next year or so, we will end up. Uh, getting permission to grow. And in a couple of years, we should have the results from the marijuana PTSD study. We're looking at samples of marijuana, one that's high in THC and low in CBD, one that's high in THC and low in T, low, excuse me, one high in CBD and low in THC, and then one that's sort of medium in THC and CBD, and then one that's placebo. And people are given 1.8 grams per day, and they can smoke as much or as little as they want, and we'll track their symptoms for a couple of weeks while they're smoking it, three weeks, and then the two week break, and then they get uh, randomized to a, one of the different kind of varieties. So they'll be their own controls as well. So hopefully like we're that. developing real good scientific information about, you know, what MDM, what, what marijuana does for PTSD, which kind of people it's best for. And we're encouraging other people to do research as well. Very cool. Um, Speaking of time going by fast, we're almost at the end of this uh, interview. Um, but very quickly, can you just tell, because I'm super excited for the Psychedelic Science Conference in Oakland, uh, April 19th to 24th. I'm definitely going to be there. Um, so if you want to talk to me and Rick, he's going to be there too. Can you tell us a little bit about what makes this conference so rad, Rick, in about a minute? Yeah. Well, we are bringing virtually the entire world's experts in psychedelic research to Oakland, to the um, Oakland Marriott City Center Hotel, and also we're renting the convention center as well for big uh, marketplace. And we expect uh, 1,500 or more people. And so this is really a way for people to meet with and learn from the leading experts in psychedelic research all over the world. And we have a whole separate track on ayahuasca, uh, and plant medicines with Biel Labate, who's coordinating that. And we've got just, um, we're, we're at this stage where the research has now been taking place for pretty much 20 years. Um, it resumed in 1990 with Rick Strassman doing a DMT study. Uh, and then really it started picking up in the middle 90s. So um, the research has matured to the point where we're on the verge of these studies, as I said, these phase three studies with MDMA, other people are working towards psilocybin research. There's been incredible developments with ketamine for the treatment of depression. So psychedelics are re-entering psychiatry, neuroscience, and public consciousness. And I think it's we've learned the lessons of the fifth of the fifty years ago. Um, we're not talking about psychedelics as making people counterculture. There's uh, and even this was our talk about. Microdosing. There's a lot of people yeah. who are using psychedelics who are part of mainstream culture and who are making major contributions to it. So I think we are able to really, at this point, integrate psychedelics into our culture. And I think we need to do it because even though we've been talking about therapeutic applications, uh, microdosing, I think really in a globalization world where we're sort of retreating into fortress America and scared of the other, the fundamental 
social change model for me is uh, mysticism is the antidote to fundamentalism. Oh, I like that. <laughs> the sense of connection, the sense of unity, it connects people to nature. It connects us to um, people who are different than themselves. And we realize what we have in common. And for our human species and the world really to survive, we're needing to overcome all these fears and anxieties and hatreds that cause us to um, be at war with each other. And we need to understand from a feeling level our common unity. And I think psychedelics is one of the very best ways for the most people to have that experience and then be more empathic, compassionate, and accepting of the other. So that's the big picture. That's the psychedelics in a post-prohibition world. It, it, I love it. Through medicine, through teaching people about healing, we, we focus on people's compassion for those that are suffering, and then we can get new information about accurate risks and benefits, and hopefully we'll be able to move to a post-prohibition world, and then we will you know, spiritualize the world, and then we'll just uh, celebrate and then our work is done and we can ascend to nirvana <laughs> oh my gosh for loving kind of a world exactly and who doesn't want that um rick doblin thank you so much for coming on the show today oh my pleasure guys uh, i was always my pleasure and i hope to have you on again soon and remember listeners you can join me every wednesday at 5 p.m eastern 2 p.m pacific Find out more and listen to all of our past shows on the lucidplanet.com. Light and love. Here's to a more compassionate and beautiful world. Bye for now. You've been listening to the hit show, Lucid Planet Radio, with renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff. Tune in each week as we illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. This hit show will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake up to the greatest version of yourself. Learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness as you explore the deeper knowledge, passion, and purpose within. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for upcoming show topics and to contact Dr. Kelly.